Hello, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, because this episode comes out on Christmas Day, ah. which is so exciting. And I was just lamenting to my lovely guest, Lena Paul, who I feel like is a gift to all of us for having come back on the show, that I did not bring a Santa hat or any Christmas theme stuff at all. And I, I'm very sad about that. But I will tell you that I am cloaked in the Christmas spirit within. We are, we're feeling <laughs> so festive. Festive as fuck in this. So festive. In this <laughs> office in somewhere downtown. Yes. So, Lena, how are you? I am so. I was going to say good, but busy is the first yes. word that yes. came to mind. So busy. So we actually just saw each other yesterday because I shot her in a treat of the month scene with a upcoming treat of the month who we cannot name we cannot. because it is a secret at this point. But I can tell you that it was a fucking super hot scene and it was so great to shoot you again. It had been a while. It's so fun being on your set because every time I see you, I'm just like, like, it's just uh, perpetually blows me away to watch somebody that's just so fucking good at their job. Thank like, you. I'm serious. Like, you know, when you just sit there and you watch somebody that's like spent years, like really putting in the time that like really cares and takes pride in their mm-hmm. work. It's yeah. just a pleasure. I think that's why I felt so guilty for being such a, a a brat yesterday. I was like, oh my God, I'm just getting in this, in this, <laughs> in this like absolute, like, pinnacle of like professionalism's way yeah. i'm just yeah. over here like trying to trying to <laughs> get my nut off <laughs> i know it's it's terrible it's this horrible balance that we strike because what lena's talking about is that her and her coworker were very excited to work together and so there was a lot of girlish excitement and sometimes not always paying attention to the fact that I was ready to roll. Um, but I get it because I've been in that situation as well. The few times that I've been talent, like I said, when I was on DP star and my playboy TV show, you just get like wrapped up in the moment and you're excited to talk to somebody. And yeah, you know that these people have to roll, but it's just, you're trying to have a good time and you're trying to, you know, create a professional product and, you know, for me, it's like I, I want to have a good time and I want to laugh, but I also I'm always on the clock because it's like, you know, yeah, as you know, you're it's the, an hourly the keeper thing. of the clock. Yeah. And so I and I don't have the fortune of having like an AD who could be the asshole for me. Right. I have to be the asshole as well as the director. So like I always have to yell at people and be like, focus. Right. Right. So. It's like, you know, occasionally like that directorial sense, like the directorial sense would outweigh my huge crush on this woman. Cause I've had a crush on this girl for like a year and a half. And yeah. I took her out. I took her out to dinner last night and I'm taking her out tonight again. That's so so. Cute. <laughs> fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is a successful lesbian relationship. <laughs> Um, that is awesome. But yeah, no, the the whole thing, you like catch yourself, you're like, wait, 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 this woman's so gorgeous, this woman's so gorgeous. Fuck, it's been 15 minutes. They're all looking at us. Yeah. No, we can go. Just yell at me. Just just yell. Yeah, and I'm trying not to like, because, you know, obviously you have to strike the balance of like, allowing yeah. people to have a good time, but also, you know, being, you know, moving things along. And When I'm directing, all I'm thinking about is minutes time like, yes like all it's I'm, impossible not to all i'm thinking about is okay it's here's my goal time of when i want to get out right all right here's the goal time of what this needs to start at what time photos need to start at and what time they need to finish up yeah. for me to get out okay that's not working here's what i need to shift around to continue yeah. to get out okay we're gonna get out 30 minutes later than that but that's okay yeah all right it's gonna be like an hour later like, yeah that's okay I'm still str- <laughs> i have to say i'm still struggling with the feature schedule um i just Bruh. shot my my latest feature for wicked last week tell and- me how long were your days um, actually, so these ones were shorter because the last movie that I shot for them, Finding Rebecca, which just came out, those were two back to back. And keep in mind, I have to shoot a wicked movie in two days. So four scenes in two days. Four scenes in two days, plus all the dialogue, Holy plus shit. the softcore and the hardcore. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. And how, all the pictures and everything. How, and box covers too. You have to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. How long does that take you? Um, so those were two 17 hour days back to back, um, which really... Yeah. Does, That's not that bad, honestly. It's actually – I know. And I hate that you say that, but I get that you say that because a lot of other directors have longer days. But for, for one me – For one scene, Yeah, for honestly. one – yeah, I've heard that. 
But for me, like that is way too long and it's exhausting for me. I'm don't oh, you're have, dead for I'm days dead. Afterwards. Oh, that's the thing. It's like, I can't shoot. I can't book shoots after that. I can't get work done because it takes me to like two days everything. to recover. Yeah. Cause it's not just the long days on set. It's also like, it's so mentally draining and <sighs> physically draining. I'm on my feet all day. I have a very small crew, so I do a lot of the stuff myself. I move fucking furniture. I move oh, yeah. lights. I move cameras. Like, I am everywhere all the time. I'm yelling right. at people to get dressed. I'm, like, all over the place. And I'm also eating terrible food and oh, way too God. much caffeine. Oh, my God. So much caffeine. So much junk food. So, yeah. So it's just bad. So so those were two 17-hour days, and I was just – exhausted. So actually when I turned in my newest script, I purposely made it shorter and I purposely made it simpler because I was like, I just can't do that. And it's not even me. Like I can't do that to my crew. Yeah. You know, um, that's always the guilt that I have. It's like putting my crew through these long days. Yeah. And you know, they might have a call time at 8am the next day for somebody else. That's the worst. Oh my gosh. When like you're going until like midnight and you know that they have to be like on the other side of LA County at like 8am the next day. Yeah. One of my crew members lives in like San Bernardino County and so I'm always – I always yeah. feel so terrible when we wrap because I know that they're going someplace in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. So um, so this one was two 12-hour days. I think actually one of them was 11 and a half and one of them was 13 and a half. So like two 12-hour days. Yeah. So much, much more manageable. That's um, amazing. That's yeah. So it was just like the script was a little bit flatter – it was fine. I think it's still going to come out great, but I, I feel like it wasn't as dynamic as the last script, but I just was like – What are you like, going to do though? I mean – can't do that to them all the time. The average mainstream production turns in five minutes of the final edit per day that they're on set. Yeah. I mean the fact that we do – you did two hours of an edit yeah. in a 12-hour day. Yeah. Two hours versus mainstream's five minutes. Yeah. Like – Oh, it's crazy. Like – and they, not to mention the fact that they have a much bigger crew. A huge crew. Huge like, crew. When I'm on mainstream sets, I'm just looking around at all of these people and I'm like, what the fuck do you even do? There's like 20 <laughs> so I people. Feel There's like 20 and people. they're all sitting around. I'm like, what are you guys all doing? It, Get to work. <laughs> it makes me so mad being on mainstream sets. I'm like, you molly coddled bitches. <laughs> I feel the same <laughs> like, way. Like, I feel I'm, the same way. <laughs> there was a moment in my last production because I was – both the the lead talent and the uh, and the writer and the director and, and which is like two trips in one holy shit never yeah again. Um, where I was like I was trying to keep my male talent hard and I'm like stroking his dick and like sucking it as I'm telling the female extra <laughs> what to do. And turning the other way and telling my camera guy and my grip oh my how I God. need it lit oh. as I'm trying to keep this talent who is only tenuously hard. <laughs> the visual on that is amazing. Please, I'll show film you. That? No, I have it. I'll show. Oh it my to God, you. I need to see this. This is amazing. Like, I mean, talk about a full time. I mean, here I am whining about all the work I have to do. At least I don't have to do all that and suck dick at the same time. Well, that was like my that was that was definitely a rare circumstance. I'm definitely not always. Did you feel like in that moment, what am I doing right now? No, it was it was one of those moments of like. It was insane. It was it was one of those moments where you're just like sort of like outside of your body observing yourself and you're just like, this is what I do for a living. This is my job. Yeah. Some people go to offices and here I am <laughs> fucking in the middle of this production day. And like I had mainstream people too. I had to have a light tech because yeah. I had this fancy piece of equipment that I had no fucking idea how to work. Right. So I had a light tech from mainstream and it was the first time that he'd ever been on an adult set. Oh my God, that must have been such an experience for him. And I'm just there, this, like, child, basically, because he's, like, you know, 45, 45-ish, as he's, like, been doing this longer than I've been alive, yeah. most likely. And I'm just, like, there, like, signing his checks and then also sucking dick and then also giving orders and trying to do all of these things at once. And we had a rap party that night at the end, and it was just – it was so – so wild our oh job God. is wild it's crazy like, it's so crazy and i feel like if you if 
if you tried to throw anybody in the mainstream side into this and be like, do everything that we do yeah. and do it for the amount of money that we do it yeah. and turn it in the amount of time that we turn yep. it in, they would be in disbelief. Yeah. Like, they wouldn't I, – I don't think that they even have any comprehension of how – I, I mean, I had no clue. And I'm in the business yeah. until I was doing a little bit of what you do. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Lena is now directing. I, I feel like we didn't oh, yeah. do that. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. It's mm-hmm. okay. We So we worked together yesterday. So we had a very long talk about production oh yesterday. God. So we're just kind of like continuing that conversation. But she started directing. She's been directing for Digital Playground, which is a big deal. I mean, that's a huge studio. You know, you're not just like doing some little like – little baby studio directing. So is that the first directing gig that you got or did you work direct for somebody else first? Um, My first directorial gig was for Babes. Um, okay. And I did one or two scenes last year, like in the fall. And uh, I, that was cool. And then, you know how it is like moving through corporate, like mm-hmm. you kind of like submit your work and it takes a little while mm-hmm. and like they put it on the website and they see how it does. And Uh, I really think that, like, you could say that I started consistently directing, like, this summer. So I've done one, two, three, four features now. Is that right? Yeah, I've done four features. And I would probably say about a dozen scenes for Uh Babes or Uh for other companies now. Uh, I'm working towards eventually doing a little bit for Twisties, uh, hoping for Reality Kings next, just like kind of going through the like Mind Geek brand right. family. Right, right, right. They've been super good to me in terms of like my performing career, and they've been so amazingly patient with my directing career. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, ultimately, I've been working for Twisties for a long time, and I was working for them before Mind Geek even operated them yeah but they've been uh they've been really good to me and actually especially lately like they changed some things i think just in the way that they handle stuff in the last couple of years and i I have to say i've been really really happy um with my position there and working for them and it's been really i feel like you've been one of the directors that really like kind of defined the brand truthfully like i feel like it was your vision and like you know like for a while twisties was kind of all over the place like yeah they didn't have much they they were like oh let's do some hardcore because it was originally a solo girl site right yeah and then they brought it and this is before my geek took over Mm -hmm. and then they started doing some girl girl and again this is before my geek took over and then my geek took over and then I think they and they and they actually, you know, were I think they had this issue with some of their brands where they were all like, well, Brazzers is doing really well. Right. So let's kind of try to put more Brazzers into all of the other Dude. brands, which yeah. just the, the Brazzification made everything, of porn. Yeah. It just made everything like kind of a shittier Brazzers. No, honestly. You know, and, and they totally recognize that. And so now they're like, OK, let's give each brand like let's really make each brand its own brand because right. we have browsers like why are we trying to do that right again? and so they came back with twisties and they were like you know going back to lesbian only site like high glam really like more production value and stuff and it's been like a world of difference and i really feel like twisties and babes have like thoughtful scripts in a lot of yeah. cases like a lot of times i look at these scripts that they give us and like occasionally of course they're silly but like <laughs> lately i've been looking at them and i'm like damn like this is this is hot like, yeah this is actually no like- there's been some really cool cool scenarios and it's Dude. funny that you say that also too about the just one like quick little aside thing about the the, the writing and this and silliness because one always likes to like complain especially if you're a director and you're overworked (laughs) about the writing you know like because often the writers there's quite a few times that writers don't work in production and so they ask things that aren't really possible why can't you just do this one thing yeah and i think also too i find that i take things a little too seriously oh same and too and so i'll be like i can't do this i can't do this why would you ask me to do this and then they'll be like okay we'll just like don't modify it how you need thing. to modify it. Like don't freak out. Right. And I'm like, okay. Oh, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you're like already all stressed out about yeah. it. You're like and already like preparing now they'll for the put thing. it in the script. They're like, well, and if this doesn't work, just do it how you think it should work. You yeah. know, and it's just like dude, Holly, just like fucking get it d- like just you know, use yeah. your expertise and get it done in a way that makes sense, you know, and uh, instead of me throwing a fucking hissy fit about everything. And I'm like, okay. I'm notorious for just not 
giving a shit about the script. I'm just like, well, I'm here, but this isn't working for this yeah. space. So like, I just don't even call corporate now. I yeah. just submit it in. I'm like, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. It's done. Well, and they probably are fine with it. Because Honestly, they, yeah, it, I haven't been smacked on the wrist for anything. Yeah, I think, um, you know, they recognize that, that that is just the case. Sometimes, like, the way you write something, you don't see the location. like, And right. you yourself don't know if something's going to work until you get there. And right. And like, this does not work in this space. Yeah. And, you know, they're flexible with that. But it's funny because now, as I'm writing my own scripts for Wicked <laughs> – I did this a lot of the last Do you do this to movie. yourself? Like, yeah, do you I'm write like, bad shit? terrible There's... writing. <laughs> Who wrote this script? This is so stupid. And then I was like, oh, yeah, it was me. Dude, I had to do a whole rewrite on the <gasps> script. Because, like, when I got into the actual filming of it, I was just like, why did I do this to myself? Yeah. Why did I do this to my crew? No, I cut, like, I cut, did like, you four over, pages. Did you, were you a little overzealous? I was, girl, I threw an actual rave and filmed a rave. Like, I threw a whole ass rave and put sex happening in the middle of it. Like, yeah. It was ambitious. Yeah. It was very ambitious. I'm, I have looked at the raw footage and, like, there's definitely stuff happening there that's good and it's gorgeous. And I think it's going to edit together okay, but I'm so nervous because of the scope of it. But I cut, like, like the first episode was originally like 20 pages of script and i was just like nope 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 nope. yeah i got it down to like 12 and the rest were like seven eight pages like the first script is always longer to like establish but i was able to sort of like cut it down significantly after the fact but yeah i did that at the beginning too like sexual fidelity was my second movie for wicked and it was like a 25 page script and the movie and and both Casey Calvert and Seth Gamble were the stars. And I think both of them oh. were like, this is the most amount of dialogue I've ever gotten. Amazing. And though. I made it really like, so basically it was about a girl who had a podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Right. So, right. What you know. Well, the thing is, is that because it's a show about a podcast, there was obviously a lot of talking. Right. It, the, like, it has to be. Doing a podcast. So there was just a lot of dialogue. I want to see and, this. Is this out? Yeah, it's out. Oh, fuck yeah. And anyway, so when we originally edited the movie together, it was three hours. <laughs> and it's supposed to only be 90 minutes. <laughs> and so Oops. we had to, like, cut it down. So I'm, I'm still I'm still learning. So like I was saying yeah. earlier with the scheduling thing, so with this last movie, I was way too ambitious with the schedule. I, like, had us finishing at, like, 5 p.m. And oh, I know. <laughs> Honey, I, I was like, nobody's finishing at 5 p.m. on a feature. I know. I it don't doesn't know, happen. I don't know what was thinking. Not even Billy. Not, not even Billy Visual could make that happen. Yeah. It was just like, you know who can make that happen? Fucking Mike Quasar. But you know, anyways. <laughs> there is that. How does he do it, I man? How does he, like, the you know fa- what it is? Fastest shot in the West. He's an editor. And so he knows exactly how much he needs. Because and he, he knows exactly which take. As he's shooting. Yeah. yeah that's it's, why. It's my lack of editing Same. acumen that, that I think really uh, hinders me. Like, I, I'm constantly sort of just like, but is this the take? Yes. Like, yeah. No, I do, I do the same. And I feel like I'm still learning there. So anyway, so I got really behind in the schedule because obviously, like, you know, I was too amb- – and that made me really grumpy. And I was, and we still wrapped it at a decent time, but I got really bitchy and I started snapping at people, which I never do. Um, So I realized after that, I'm like, give yourself, like, do not have that, like make it way longer than you think. Cause it's better to be like, oh, we're ahead of schedule and behind schedule. So that was a good learning experience for me. I'm like, I got to not, cause I just, cause I'm so like focused on such a schedule person. I was like so angry. It's. It feels like herding cats. <laughs> yeah. Like feral it certainly, fucking cats. It like, certainly that's, does. That's just like you have this plan and you're just like, why is it that this this should work this way? This yes. should absolutely work this yeah. way. And yet somehow when you put it into living, breathing practice with like 10 other people in the room, yeah. it just doesn't. I don't. I have yet to fully wrap my head around why exactly, but now I just sort of double the amount of time that I think yeah. everything is going to take. Like, if I think that sex should realistically take an hour, I'm like, well, what if he has boner issues? Well, what if she's exactly. an idiot? Well, what if this? Whatever. So, yes. like, I allot, like, two hours, two yeah. and a half hours for sex, yeah. shit like that. And have you ever noticed that certain performers just take a long time just to do everything? Oh, yeah. Just to pull stuff out of their suitcase. Oh, and yeah. And go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. And, like, just, like, they're just slow. No, no, no. Like, they just talk a lot. The, and, like, they just. 
the person that we were shooting with, I love her to death, but yeah. I directed her and like yeah. I was I was like me and my clipboard were just like, okay. She's so pretty. She's so fucking pretty. She's so fucking pretty and she's so fucking nice and we're not going to get stressed out about this. Yeah. And on the bright side, we're here as you're chit-chatting and I can stare at how pretty you are. There's yeah. that. There is yeah. absolutely that. Yeah, I I'm too straight. That doesn't work for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, like it's so so funny because some people are they're on set and all they want to do is get the fuck off set as yeah. quickly as possible. Yeah. The, the, and then some people just want to stay all day. Yeah, I'm like, do you have nobody to come home to? Yeah. Is that what that They're is? like, this is like my social hour. Like, this is honestly, fun for me. Honestly, honestly. And Which, I'm like, I just want to go home. Like, I, and like, I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I remember the days whenever I was shooting, like, 20 days a month, like, as female talent. And I was just like, okay, we're going to roll through this sex with no cuts. Mm -hmm. I am not going to cut once. If you go slightly soft, I'm going to, like get down on my knees and dirty talk the fuck out of you while I'm keeping you fluffed. Like, I'm going to do all this finessing shit to mm -hmm. make sure that we never have to call a cut. Yeah. Like, everything was about how quickly can we get stuff up. I would be, like, hurting the directors. I would be like, so I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are ready. <laughs> yeah. Like, now that I'm only doing it a handful of, of days a month, I'm just like, how you been? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. I'm one of those now. I'm going to chill. <laughs> Where's my clipboard? Just hey, I want to ask you like kind of a random question. I've yeah. asked a couple of guys this question, um, and it's just something that I feel like I personally need to know, but mm. I suppose I won't have the real answer because everyone's a little different. I've really built this up a lot now. I it's know, not right? That, it's not that big of a question. I know. So if a guy is struggling with his boner, is it better that the crew is dead silent or do we act natural and like kind of chit chat between ourselves or is that distracting? I never know. For me, I think that like what from what I've seen, the best way to handle it is like like I think I think whenever they're in the least amount of pressure and they're not distracted by any thing happening is like it, it has to be a little bit of both like mm -hmm. I love the the camera guy who's got his phone with clash of clans like ready to go mm -hmm. and he's just sitting there playing his stupid video game mm -hmm. just like kicking it I think it's it depends on the talent yeah it really does but I found you know what I really think uh, so like people with attention deficit issues tend to be like thrill seeking people like mm -hmm. people with attention deficit issues wind up as firefighters and cops and all of this stuff and they're more creative and mm -hmm. I think we have a disproportionate number of people with attention and focus issues mm -hmm. in porn mm -hmm. and creative stuff in general right so like I think if talking too much fucks with their with their boners as well. Like yeah. male voices yeah. is a problem. It's like don't look at them. Don't be like waiting on them per se, right. but also don't be like cutting up so heavily that like they can't think about whatever thing in their Right. Head. That's the thing. It's like I always wonder like cuz I've asked a couple of guys and they say usually like, "Oh, just act normal." Like I've asked them don't like, make a big the deal out don't of make it. a big deal yeah. out of it which I try not to but sometimes I'm just like do I tell people like is it distracting or is it you know or is like the silence worse like it's just dead silent and the only noise is the sad noise of you trying to get a boner in that mouth. weird that that strange meat noise <laughs> yeah that That's... that meat that meat fapping noise is like the only thing that like fills the room you oh, know oh god that's like the worst sound ever it's when it extends so... for like a long period of time it's Awkward. just the worst sound <laughs> It's like the sound the director God. never wants to hear. God damn It's the sound it. of money being pissed down the drain. Oh, God. And, like, why is it that it's, like, the boner issues only happen on the days when you're, like, I can't fucking afford this. Yes. Like, it's, I know. The boners are only fucking up when it's, like, you know, one in the morning. And yeah. Like, or, which, like, you know, you understand. Like, which is understandable. It's yeah. fucking one in the morning. Yeah. No, yeah. I totally get that one. Completely get it. But, like. The dudes that are – it's it's like on the days that I can't afford it, the dudes that I would never expect to have mm -hmm. an issue. I it's know. like their, their card is up. But I like know. I don't know. At the same time though, it's like I feel like we also – I don't know. Do you think – do you think porn is harder for male talent nowadays than it was when you were in the business back in the day? Because I feel like there's a lot of dudes like 
going ahead and getting like the robotic implants and like all this crazy stuff like nowadays that I don't necessarily know. Do guys about. really do that in our industry? Literally, no. Like the the robot dick. Yes, yeah. I can name. Wait, it. how many robot dicks are out there? How do I don't know about this? Do you what? know? Because you can like feet. No, you, like, I can feel, feel the, the button in their balls. No, it's amazing. The button in my balls. <laughs> like, Sounds like a Christmas song. Like, the button in my balls. The button in my balls. <laughs> I just press the button in my balls. It's so amazing because, like, of course, they all have egos, so they want to like overfill their dick to the point that it's like way too hard. And I'll just reach down there, and like, it seems like I'm playing with their balls on the camera, but really, I'm just pressing Pushing the, the valve to deflate it to my like ideal size. Wait, fuck off, really? <laughs> no, I'm dead ass done that. <laughs> Wait, okay, how come this is the first time I've heard about this? Okay, we are not talking about guys shooting their dicks up, right? No, no, no. We're not talking about the needles. We're not talking about Caverject. We're talking about the actual implant that you get where it's like a balloon inside of your your phallus that you – okay, so like there's a valve uh, in your dick. I have heard this from people like who like are um, like paralyzed, like paraplegics getting this. Yeah. But I didn't know that, like, regular porn performers got it. Oh, dude. Okay. So, like, we have – I – eventually, if you're using Caverject enough, which, like, a huge portion of the of the male talent pool are mm-hmm. using it now with, like, increasing frequency because mm-hmm. it's becoming to the point now where, like, that's becoming the standard practice. Mm-hmm. So the natural guys get really scared about the idea of, like, well, what if I just – Having a have, bad day on set. Yeah. What if I just yeah. have a slightly natural dick and it takes me like 20 minutes longer than the than dude, the, the dude that shoots up? This is absolutely true because like those are the people that you don't hire back because that's an extra 20 minutes. That you have to pay. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I selfishly will hire the guys that get boners the fastest and are the most consistent and right, right. are the strongest. Yeah. So like when the coverage act came along, it's kind of like juicing. It's kind of like a mm. it's like our it's like a the steroids of porn so like when Caverject came along and guys were injecting their dicks to the point that they were instantly hard and whatever like that was cool and whatever but you're putting a, a expiration date on your penis at that mm-hmm. point so like I know a 31 year old male talent who's been in four years who just got a, an implant because I mean I don't know if he's exactly 31 I know he's like early 30s but okay. somewhere in there but like and he's only been in a handful of years and he just got the implant because he used coverage act so much and so many days that like it stopped working Mm -hmm. and like you can't go back from coverage act to like viagra like Mm -hmm. you can't go backwards so you can only go forwards into these robotic implants so like not robotic they're not i just call them affectionately a robot dick but like the implant thing with the button that's permanent that's forever you can't have you don't wake up with morning wood after that you just have a butt moon that you control from so you can never get a boner on your own it might get a little bit chubbier from what i've heard (laughs) but not like all the way because the apparatus like the vein that controls that at like the underside of their dick you've now hijacked you've put this valve that you control with a shut on or a shut off button and like the base of your balls and like you've replaced that with like a balloon in the dick there's like two balloons that go in that kind of like have replaced the function of those two big veins in your dick. Do you see my eyes right now? I know. My mind is blown. Dude, like when they I feel like I never worked in porn at all. How do I not know this? Well, you shoot a lot of GG. That's true. I shoot a lot of girl girl. Yeah. I don't shoot a ton of boy girl. But like the 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 whole like whatever kind of like implant that they use, oftentimes you have to get like revision surgeries, like it's all this crazy stuff. And I mean... Okay, wait. <sighs> How does... This, okay, so you press a button and it fills with fluid? Blood. It fills with blood. So yeah. it takes... So it opens like a valve that fills it with blood. So there's... So it pumps you gotta, your own blood into it. Yeah. It's like just like diverting from like that big artery that you have down okay. there. Is it your femoral? I don't remember exactly. But whatever. There's like a big artery at the base of your balls that like you are diverting blood flow into your dick right. through it. And then like when you want it to go down, you like press the button again and you just squeeze the dick and you kind of wring it out like a sponge. <laughs> like you just squeeze it really hard and like all of the, <laughs> the blood flow goes back in. Wow. To your body. Wow. Yeah. And now, how does that – does that make any difference with the ability to come? Does it make it harder or easier, do you know? Or 
Is it the same? You know, that's a great question. I do not have a penis, so I and I've never gotten. I that need to far. get a guy who actually has one and is openly will openly admit he has one, which I feel. I'll like, give you some names. At give the me end some of it. names. I, I, I feel seriously like, doubt that they'll come on the podcast and talk about it, though. I feel like. Like, one person that I know is, like, particularly proud of the fact that they got one. They're like, well, I'm a fucking professional. Like, I do what it takes to get yeah, the job you know, done. That's true. Like, yeah. this is the level of dedication that I have to You can't argue with that. It's not logical to me. <laughs> I, like, it is. Like, it totally is on the one hand. But, like, on the other hand, I'm like, there seems – there's something kind of, like, sad about it to me yeah. at the same time but also too don't we have insanely unreasonable expectations for these men like that's more so what you i'm know? saying it's like okay you're gonna do something to like permanently change the course of your sex life because mm. this will change like the way yeah. that your sex life happens in right. some ways like you're gonna change that for a job that pays you 300 to a thousand dollars for the five to ten bookings that you get a yeah. month like i mean i don't know i think the median income for a male talent can't be more than 50 to 75k and like the median i'm saying mm-hmm. like the median yeah, income I for, guess so. for san fernando like yeah if we're just talking about people that are like strictly like not talking about like only fans or stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that um but i'm like would i really like take my whole dick out basically take the whole insides of my dick out yeah. and replace it with a balloon for 50k a year yeah i don't know but at the same time but at like, the same time women do that with their boobs i was about to say that i was like you know we have all of these expectations of like women modifying their bodies to like make them better and more sexually appealing mm-hmm. so i guess if you want to give yourself a performative edge like that's totally great but at the same time though like you know if you have augmented breasts and you are doing porn like your augmented breasts have no competitive impact on my natural breasts you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying so like that's cool but like the if you're juicing basically Mm -hmm. and we're competing for the same positions and you have this competitive edge over me me as a natural person like Mm -hmm. that's gonna have an impact on my income you know what I mean? You're talking about from a guy's perspective. Yeah, from like yeah, the guy's because perspective. Because you can't tell – like you can tell fake boobs from real boobs, right? Right. Pretty much 99.9% of the time. Right. Um, with the male penis thing, you obviously can't because I fucking couldn't tell. Well, and like if you have it or if you don't, like it doesn't really like impact your likelihood. I, I don't know. Like as long as your dick is reliable and you're like reasonably attractive and can like fuck good, like I don't think that the talent mm-hmm. – will like that the audience will care if the talent is got right. a robot dick if anything they'll be like sick man that's fucking cool if you yeah can get or a like boner where do i get that from. yeah right yeah. i never have to worry about getting hard for a woman ever again like, yeah cool for the for the low low price of seventy thousand dollars in a foreign country is that how much no no is that how much it is i mean that's what i heard but you know yeah because they won't do they not do it here um, I think they, I think that it's, sorry, it might be 70K in the United States and then people go outside of the United States because it's significantly I kind of cheaper. can't believe that, like, I, people aren't, like, trying to advertise this more. Because if there's one thing that men are, like, consistently insecure about, it's their penis. I mean, right. you know, as a female performer, like, oh how God. many guys want to send you, DM you their dicks and hear your opinion about it. And, like, the number, of, ugh, I can't tell you, like. You know, hanging out with male talent or, like, casually seeing them and whatever, just, like, their boner is the third person in the relationship. We're (laughs) constantly talking about their boners and the ways that they can make them better and what they can do better in the scenes and what supplements they can take to have a better boner. It is a constant, (laughs) like, it is the third person in the relationship, like, 100%. I'm just, like... Dude, you're fucking me and you're like your dick is at like 85% because we've been having nothing but sex and I'm looking you in the eyeballs and I can tell all you're thinking about is the fact that your boner is not like at the level of 100% like yeah. perfectly like shatteringly hard yes. like, like you think it should be. Yeah. I'm so glad I don't have a penis. Dude, right? <laughs> like I couldn't be a male talent. No. No. Like it's so much – It's. It's differently hard. Like, yes. I think that a lot of the struggles that, like, female talent 
face are just sort of like really enhanced versions of like what women face in general. This is true. And, yeah. But like the specifics that like male talent face, like per- specifically with like performance and pay gaps and like all of these like mm-hmm. agencies and navigating social climates and all of these things are like all kind of like they are some there is some crossover to like real life. But at the same time, it's just like Olympic levels. Yeah. Of- of yeah. worse. Like, every guy stresses a little bit about his boner, but, like, right now there's 10 people whose income depends on whether or not you can come at the end of the day. Their livelihood and everything. Yeah. And they've exposed themselves in a way to the world and to so many people that, yeah, they're so reliant on it, whereas, you know, like, a guy you might be dating is, you know, only girls he's had sex with have seen his penis, and it's kind of like... And they all wanted to have sex with him, too. Right. It's like the they thing. weren't being paid to do it. Well, who knows? But right. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? I mean, yeah, yeah. who knows? But who knows? <laughs> generally speaking, the, the baseline assumption is, like, if you're having sex with somebody in your personal life, like, you're doing it for recreational pleasure. Whereas, yeah. like, there are times when you're having sex, even, like, in content settings, when you're just, like, you do not want to be here. Like, you mm-hmm. do not want to be touching the people that you're touching. You mm-hmm. are doing this in the same way that, like, I clean my cat's litter box or I do my taxes. It's because mm-hmm. it's, like, the appropriate thing to do. I have a content installment. I have rent, whatever. It needs to get paid. Like, that is not a conducive environment for a boner. Yes. Boners do not flourish in such an environment. No, they're delicate creatures. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break and... <laughs> We're going to come back and probably talk about boners more because, hey. Our they, lives revolve around them. They they do, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mine less so than other people's. Yeah, you being primarily a. Primarily a girl-girl performer. So Director. <laughs> I mean, oh, dear. <laughs> Whoops. Wait. There, no, there's nothing else. You tried else. to be on my OnlyFans? There is nothing else that, like, hasn't been leaked yet that's, like, Damn a big it. secret that's coming out. So don't get excited. That was truly a I got excited. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. (laughs) Are you a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered? Of course you are. Well, I need your help to keep this show going. This is why I've set up a Patreon account where you can donate to support my show. And in exchange, you can be eligible for all kinds of cool, fun perks and prizes, which include autographed DVDs and books. See, guys, she's actually signing shit. Free membership passwords to my website, hollyrandall.com. Free mugs, pens, shirts, bags, all kinds of really cool stuff. So take care of me and I will take care of you. I will not only be able to continue to produce this podcast with really awesome, inspiring content about your favorite adult stars, but I will also give back to you in terms of all the cool, fun perks and prizes that we offer. So please, please support me at patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And thank you guys so much for your support. I could not do this without you. Hello, everybody. We're back. Uh, during our break, we were actually talking to my Patreon members who were watching this show live. We gave some shout outs. So if you are a member of my Patreon, you could have possibly gotten a shout out and watched that whole break. But if you're not, you, you will not hear it. So you should go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered for future access to you should do live it. feeds. You should. It's the cost of like a coffee. Yeah, literally less than that. It's $5 yeah. a month. Like, it's so funny because when you think about what you spend at Starbucks versus, like, what you'll spend a month on something. And I'll bulk, too. I'll be like, oh, my God, $12 a month. That's crazy. And then I'm like, I will easily spend $25 at Starbucks and not even think about it. Honestly. It's it's so stupid. Like, I can't get lunch for 12 bucks. Yeah. You just compare it to, like, how much money you'll spend at Starbucks. I feel like that's that should be, like, your bar for everything. Like, if you'll spend that money at Starbucks or more than, like, you should not even think about Especially it. Especially for art. Like, we as a collective society devalue artistic yes. endeavors so much. I That's mean, like, so it's, it's the butt of jokes. To go to art school or to, like, yeah. actually take your art seriously as a craft in any way is, like, we think that that's, like, lesser than. But yeah. at the same time, we're obsessed with, like, using and appropriating other people's work. Like, right. Just fucking... It's, it's a, the cost of a coffee. It yeah. costs so little to keep us fed and happy and like doing and making things for you in good yeah, ways it's I know. really no it's so we are we were talking about like personal platforms kind of during the break which is actually great because i wanted to bring that um into the conversation anyhow 
Uh, but I was going to say, so I started like an OnlyFans recently and we were just talking about like really cool fans who reach out to us and, you know, we get generally like the dick pics and like the show me your pussy and that's all they care about kind of thing, which is like, whatever. I mean, yeah, we all got to get our rocks off. Yeah. And, and look, it's funny cause I will get like, personally offended. <laughs> Which I I know I'm being ridiculous because I'm like these people joined this to see naked fucking picture like what are you Why am expecting I? from these people like stop it but I still you know whatever get all uppity high, uppity about it but then I like have my moments yeah but then when I get like really lovely messages from people it's ten times lovelier it's so oh nice gosh. it's so appreciated like when people are like you know I just love your work and like being able to see a naked picture of you here and there is like great but like just really appreciate what you've been doing mm-hmm. and like you know you're such a hard worker and I'm so proud to support you I'm like oh my god thank you like I wh- love that when people take the time out of their day like just to to pass on that type of kindness and positivity like yeah. I don't think they understand how much negativity that we encounter yeah. even just like you guys specifically like as performers like I don't really face a lot of the stigma that I know you guys encounter so but you also just like you get hit by the spray of <laughs> of like you're caught in the crossfire of just like social media general horniness of, yeah like, the, the yeah. lonely sad depressing yeah or just like the be. angry um you know yeah hang- the, the stalkers the weirdos the yeah yeah, I mean, my YouTube channel is a perfect example of. Oh know, yeah, definitely there I, are the occasional. I general I the comments on there are just horrific. I try to go through and like kind of purge pull. every. Yeah, now and again. I'll take. I mean, look, if someone goes on there and like like says something about like me being a fat ass or whatever, like I don't whatever. really care. But if they go in and say something like particularly nasty about my guest, which is completely unjustified, um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll generally try to take that out. But I do miss stuff sometimes. Well, that's super appreciated because I mean, like I, I was like going through my phone recently, just like cleaning out my photos, and I found like all of these screenshots that I had just like all in a row, and I couldn't even tell you when I took these. Well, I mean, I can tell you they were dated, but like mm-hmm. I don't remember doing it or why. But it was just nothing. But like I think I was trying to make like a greatest hits of like shittiest comments about me Mm -hmm. that I had found on the internet just like the greatest hits for like some type of like humorous thing and it was just like why do we think that we can say these things on the internet and that they won't be seen or like observed or anything because we don't have to be held accountable yeah people can do it anonymously because people don't have to take responsibility for the things that they say right that's because they're cowards no like it's so wild to me and like I think that a lot of people think that like you're not going to see that stuff. And I, I don't know. For me, for example, like I keep really close track of my social media mm-hmm. presences and like what people are saying about me, like in various places like Reddit and 4chan and mm-hmm. Pornhub and all of these places. Like if you write a comment about me, like inevitably I'm probably going to read it. Mm-hmm. And so much of my time I think about like, you know, when I was new in the business, I felt like I had to, like, have a witty comeback for, like, everything. Mm-hmm. And just letting that go and just really appreciating and focusing more love and attention on the people that have good, kind things to say mm-hmm. is been so vital for keeping my brain, yeah. like, in a positive space. Yeah. Like, culling social media from my life in a big way has been hugely helpful. Like, we don't – I don't even realize – the level of negativity that it contributes to your life until yeah. you get rid of it. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. I, I will, like, check all the comments on my social media for sure. But, um, like, I won't go actively seeking out what people say about me. Like, like on Reddit, there was some my, – my boyfriend actually told me that, like, there were some people having conversations about the fact that, like – you know, like I put up some nudes like very recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> yeah, how long ago was that? So, well, so I leaked my nudes accidentally. You were telling me this story. I this told her the story. Some shit that I would do. Yeah, and I've meant I've told the story before on this podcast. I don't want to bother people with repeating it because a lot of people still don't believe me. It, it's so irrelevant. I don't care. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so they got accidentally leaked, and then I decided to just own up to it, and I was like, I'll just profit off of it. And then, like as of late, I had a conversation with my boyfriend and you know, I was like, I kind of like want to put up some nudes like here and there. I find that when I've done that, um, I have a huge response on it. And, um, I, I don't know. I think that 
it would be cool. And he was all for it. And he was oh, like, absolutely. He's, he's so like, cute. Yeah, I like your boyfriend. He's time. really great. He's really, really great. And um, actually, we it, it was it was really sweet. It was his idea. So like I was posting a couple like bathroom selfies here and there. And then he actually said to me, so the deal was, is that I had to send him the pictures before I put them up like on my Snapchat or something okay. like that, you know? So it felt more like collaborative. Yeah. And that like he could be a part of, him, you know, like he's the only person I'm having sex with. So right. like if I'm taking sexy pictures of myself, like he should get them too. Right. You he's know like, I mean? listen, I want the, uh, I want the VIP Patreon yeah. <laughs> perks. Yeah. I want the advanced exactly. receipts. He was like, you know, I, I I want sexy pictures of you. I Aww. love you. And I think you're sexy, you know. Cute. And so, um, and I so that. I <laughs> sent him a few. And then he was like, you know what? You gotta keep taking, stop taking these shitty pictures of yourself <gasps> in your shitty bathrobe. In because I had this old bathrobe, which he recently <laughs> bought me a new one. This is very comfortable. He's like, we okay? have to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the shitty bathroom. He's like, and then he goes, Your oh fans God. deserve more than that. Why don't no we rent way. out a nice hotel room? You get some laundry and I'll take some like pictures of you. And I was like, No way. Okay. And he's and so we turned it into like a date night, which was actually really cool because That's hot. That this is so hot. Like as a content creator, oh my it god! It was because really, I am not really a. Se- you don't feel sexy. No, I never wear lingerie. I'm generally like we have sex, but I'm You're not so much of a- sexy. What are you talking Thank about? You. Like competent, confident women that are like in control of what they're doing, I, like. That is the definition of sexy. Go on. I'm <laughs> and like you're fucking hot and stuff. There's that too. Like I've seen I've seen your nudes. Not that I went looking. I, I went looking, but <laughs> so uh yes, we made like a date night out of it. And it was actually really great because so I had wholesome. never like been sexy for him before. I'd <gasps> never like put lingerie for him before and like How long have you guys been together? Like, over three years. And you never wore lingerie for him? No, I never liked it. I Honestly, was, like, I never I just wore felt lingerie si- for my I just felt guys. silly in it. I felt like an imposter. Oh. It felt like something that my models wear. I don't do that. Like, right. I'm not a it is sexy so girl hard like that. To I'm a, separate like, yeah. lingerie from work. Lingerie yeah. feels like my work uniform yeah. to some degree. Yeah. I felt, I felt like an imposter. I felt kind of embarrassed. And I was like, you know, I'm going to look like I'm trying to be, you know. Trying. I'm trying too hard. Like, this isn't right for me, but... It's so funny because, like, we're... We are flooded with all of this media, right? Mm-hmm. Of, like, women looking effortlessly mm-hmm. sexy. Yeah. But you and I know yeah. how many fucking hundreds of hours of man work went into that. Yeah. Like, from the, all of the procedures, the, like, mm-hmm. the maintenance procedures that she gets done, to all of the pre-planning of those photos, to the retouching of those photos, mm-hmm. to the distribution of those photos. Like, everything in it is effort, the effort is making it look effortless. Yeah. And you can imagine, I mean, you know, with how meticulous I am about shooting content of oh, other I can't people. Imagine. Forget it. When it's me, <gasps> baby. That is really hard. And also, like, it's someone else doing it, too. Yeah. So, like, there's. Who's not a professional. That's what I was about to say. Like, I don't think he's probably a pro. So, there's that other side of it. Like, my boyfriend takes all these photos of me, and I'm like, don't you dare post those. Yeah. Like, I have a brand. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't say that sentence without laughing. But it's but, true. Like, no, it's we're so hard on ourselves. Mm-hmm. Nothing is good enough for mm-hmm. my face. Like yeah. nothing. Yeah. So, but I have to say, like, he's really learning. Like, I teach him stuff. Like, I'll this take this shot, and I'll be like, thing. okay, this you need to shoot it this way, and this is why. Mm-hmm. And so, like, and he's like actually like, picking up and got a good eye. So I was impressed. So. So anyways, well, and he loves you. So like yeah. when you love the subject, it's kind of like when you love who you're cooking for, there's mm-hmm. just like an extra X yeah. factor that yeah. goes in. I don't know. Have you ever loved somebody that you photographed? No. It's it's different. <laughs> no, it's not like, I mean, not in that way. I mean, I've never not, not like in Have a you sexy done like way. portraiture like, though? Like uh Yeah, I've shot like portraits of like my boyfriends or whatever. I actually shot a great picture of my boyfriend. Um yeah, for his uh headshots work, work headshot yeah so oh, i mean cute. yeah but it's different like when you yeah. love the person you're you're photographing yeah. you see them in a different way yeah but yeah but th- that's exactly how it was so i was like sexy for him i like put on this show and like i'm a hair and makeup done which he never got so like for him it was like really a treat a treat and exciting we rented like this nice hotel room and then we just had like fucking amazing sex and he was like i love this this is great like <gasps> you're 
like I never get to have you like this. Oh my god. So gosh. it was actually like a really it was really good for our relationship. And so wow. I think we're gonna try to do it like every few months. Oh my gosh. And like, yeah, and he's totally you know I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. So it, it it actually like worked out nice. It's just and also too like and I don't wanna be an ageist because I I hate it when other people do this, but you know how like you make exceptions for everybody else, but like it, for yourself, it's always like there's no excuse. But I feel stupid like being like 41 and like trying Wait, you're, to do you're these 41. things. I am. No way. You're not 41. I am. Okay. Firstly, all right. Like, why do men get to be sexy into their 50s and 60s? Like, my mom would still jump Sean Connery's bones me if too. she had the option. I mean, frankly, me three. But me too. Like, bro, why do men stay fucking until they're like literally so old that they can't even move and we suddenly stop being sexualized around like late 30s early 40s because i'll tell you exactly why because for men usually the attractiveness is all about power right and for women the attractiveness is about youth and fertility specifically fertility Honestly, the it's true. It, like it is true because we don't. We only see like one facet. It's like that, men. Yeah, exactly. That's if you're only looking at things in a multi, in a one faceted way, like right. very like closed minded kind of narrow. Yeah. Scape. But I think that the changing landscape of like porn, like we were talking about with, you know, the MILF brand being so huge, we're huge. seeing that. And mature. Yeah. I was just reading. Uh, no, I was with you when I was like reading that. Pornhub Insights, yes. actually. We were reading the, the Pornhub Insights blogs, which to anybody listening, I super recommend. It's like a really, it's safe for work. You can go to the Pornhub Insights blog. And it's really interesting just to read like what actually people are beating off to. Yeah, as the a top whole. searches for this year. It's and wild. in the top five was what, Aliens? Um, it right? was aliens, ASMR, um, mature, not MILF, mature. mature. Uh, these were the top, like the ones that had made like huge trending gains. They weren't necessarily like the top ranked. Oh, okay. Like, I the top ranked was like Japanese, hentai, Which lesbian, the top. MILF. Yeah. Um, all of like the standard categories, but those with, were like the ones that made like huge gains mm-hmm. over the course of this year. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that I'm really fascinated by women who like, there's something really magical, I think about turning 40 or so, Mm -hmm. because you're liberated from a lot of those expectations that are put on youthful women Mm -hmm. of how you have to act and how you have to be. Like, I love women from the ages of like 40 to 60, because somewhere in that span of time, they just give fewer and fewer fucks. (laughs) Like, they really stop giving a fuck. And like, men stop relating to them and immediately through the lens of like sexualizing them. Mm -hmm. So like, you have this strange freedom at times Mm. of like, like not being instantly sexualized. You can yeah. just be a person first as opposed to like a potential sexual conquest. This is so true because it's it's funny. I've noticed as, you know, I've gotten older that I am definitely hit on a lot less. Oh, yeah. And like wolf whistled on the street and that kind of stuff. And yeah, I don't really need, I don't feel like I really need to worry about men like, trying to fuck me all the time yeah like, like it's it doesn't tiring happen. in your use yeah and it's, the thing is is that's weird is i kind of feel like i look better now than i did when so i was hot. younger thank you <laughs> only because when i was in my 20s i was like a raging alcoholic and i don't know if you've ever seen pictures of me in my no, 20s actually, I, yeah, I look really bad <laughs> my face is like really bloated and i'm like i look terrible i'll show you some photos of bloating like, <laughs> me at all so, so it's interesting, but I think that there's, so I think it's not even just like the attractiveness, but I think like youth, maybe the idea of some kind of corruptible innocence or some kind of vulnerability, naivety, vulnerability that, that, you know, certain pr- more predatory men, obviously not all men, there's a mo- lot of wonderful men out there, but are attracted to that. Right. And I think it also like, you can get even more psychological. It can even be about like the age at which you stopped maturing mentally. There can Mm. be that sense of like, you know, these are my golden years. And so when I think about like these prime sexual experiences that I had, it was all with women who sort of like looked like that. Mm -hmm. Um, There's that sense. Like, I just find that uh, I don't want to shit on 
on a blanket shit on like a, a group of people like your kink is your kink whatever but you know when i see the um the prevalence of like the teen genre at mm-hmm. times i look at it and i'm just like explain to me 55 year old man in uh, 200 words or less exactly what it is about this that you find appealing because i find as i get older that the demographic of what i find attractive skews Mm. but also that my relationship to like say god so you know the the shoot that you and i had where like the girl looked at me not the one yesterday but like the one where the girl looked at me and she's like my prom was six months ago Oh, f- wait. Shh. Yes and no. I don't remember off the top of my it was, head. It was, the, is- it was the nightmare one. It was the... the oh, yeah. 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 I yeah. forget that one. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And like she'd never been with a woman and all of that stuff. And yes. like I really had to go into this headspace, like a very predatory headspace to be mm-hmm. able to do this. Like I had to think of her as this like thing that I was going to devour yeah. in order to be able to like get into a place where like I could actually fuck her like there was very much that like power dynamic that yeah. had to come into play for it to be something attractive to me like anytime that I have to fuck somebody born after the year 2000 <laughs> like I'm just I'm just like okay we're gonna think some stuff that we're not gonna analyze too deeply for the next hour and 45 minutes <laughs> and uh, we can unpack this in therapy later <laughs> this is just i just work. doing whatever I need to do to get through the scene yeah and like to be able to deliver a convincing p- performance and you right. sort of have to go into this alternative headspace and like doing that has made me understand what men find attractive about teens mm. like i've looked at this and i'm like wait i'm actually turning myself on here oh my god this is this is like the fuck these are the the strange parts about doing porn is mm-hmm. that you kind of have to find something attractive about every person that you're with. If you really yeah. care about your job and like really care. I was going to say that is something that I've heard from almost every guy that I've had on because one of the most common questions I ask a male performer is what do you do if you're not attracted to your scene partner? Because obviously a man has to be able to physically perform until you came on. I didn't realize it was just robotic penis. So the question was <laughs> moot, but <laughs> you really care about your performances and so you're trying to get like your lady boner going and so you're actually thinking about a way how can I be attracted to this woman so I can make this be authentic as opposed to like okay well I'm not into this girl so I'm just gonna stick my tongue out and do this yeah for 30 minutes I just I hate that like I have too much of a work ethic to be able to just submit a scene like that like Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave sadder about that than I will be about the fact that like I thought about turning this 19 year old like out on my hand as I'm doing this. I'm yeah. just like, got her by the throat. And I'm just yeah. like, tell me you're my good girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. Say it. Say you're a good girl. But like, no, it's, it, I don't know. It's sexuality when you're getting older. Like, it's weird because in, you know, mainstream world, like you can be playing a teenager until you're like 35. Mm-hmm. And then in porn, like, the minute that you hit 25, you're suddenly in no man's land for yeah. the next, like, five years. You're yeah. like, well, you're too old to look like a teenager, but you're not quite a MILF yet. Mm-hmm. So Unless what do we do Unless the company's really desperate for a MILF role and you've had too many lip injections and then they're just going to cast you as not a MILF at 25. Even. Anyways, I 100% shot a 25-year-old girl as a MILF. I... At 22, I played a stepmother to my ex-husband who was two years older than me. (laughs) I was upset. (laughs) Like, it was a whole thing. It was a whole fucking thing. Um, But no, like, it's so crazy how, like, like, I'm already thinking about the process of aging and, like, whether or not I want to sort of, like, age with porn in Mm. like the traditional MILF ways Mm -hmm. like you know do you go towards that perfectly quaffed augmented state that like we define as MILF and I'm Mm -hmm. just like no like am I gonna retire per se like no I'll always sort of like you know I've worked too hard to build what I have at Mm -hmm. this point to like walk away from that would just be it would just be stupid yeah but am I going to like go out and get huge fake lips or like fake tits or start going into that. Not that there's anything wrong with those things. Like I'm hugely attracted to lots of women who Mm -hmm. augment themselves in like that traditional MILF way. But like, why can't I just age? And if 
you still think I'm hot. I'm hot. Like, I feel like you're not going to have a problem. There are certain women that like break that mold that don't, you know, I think if you're hot and Thanks. you're a great performer and you manage your career well, I don't think that you ever have to put yourself into that box. Boxes. Right. Well, and there's just fewer boxes to stay boxed into yeah. these days, I yeah. feel like. Like, it used to be that there was such a, a a defined path for how to do porn, that there mm-hmm. was this trajectory. And there was these things that you can do and these things that you can't do, no matter right. what. And now – you can do porn any which way that you want to. You can stay home and just have sex with your husband and your best friends if that's all you want to do mm-hmm. and make just as much money mm-hmm. as the girls on the covers of Brazzers box cover DVDs. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can do it that way. Or, like, it used to be that you just didn't really see that many performer directors happening. And, like, right. now th- there's one on there's one in, like, every brand at yeah. minimum. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's... <laughs> You know, kind of more. Not everybody can be a director, but I think that if you can, having the experience of having been a performer is really valuable. And it's kind of one of those things that even if like right now, you know, I have like an agreement with digital that I do like a feature a month and then about a handful of scenes for babes and other companies. One feature a month. Yeah, I'm doing a feature a month. Um, See you next year, girl. That's a lot. Um. Yeah, no, because it's Because also really two intense. digital features are usually four, four to five days, if it's the same when I was working They're there. They're doing series now. Like, I get a lot of the series, which is like a like a trilogy thing, okay. as opposed to like a, like a four to five episode thing. But the next one I'm doing is actually six episodes that I'm uh, – it starts on Monday. And you have to shoot all six in a month? So I'm shooting from – I'm shooting two episodes in two days, and then um, the the lead had some scheduling conflicts around the holidays, so we're picking it back up in the new year, and I'm doing four episodes in four days. Oh, and, you know, there's, like, always the limited budget aspect of it, so really there's, like, a whole-ass dialogue day that they needed that I'm tacking on into one of the GG days, and I'm just like, just – just kill me. Just <laughs> – just take me out back and shoot me. Because <laughs> the thing is, is that it's not just the days you're on set. It's all the prep and yeah. scheduling and getting everything in a way that it makes sense that everybody's not sitting around on set all day. It's and that you bring in scheduling. people the, back the least amount of times and Holy shooting and, and you don't go from location. You stay in one location, shoot everything. Like, that's the hardest thing. The the blessing is that this series is all taking place in one house. So That's great. And I had, like, another scene that I had to reschedule because I told you the, yeah. uh, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I had to reschedule that. So I'm just, like, there at the house for three days straight. I don't right. have to pack my gear in and out. I don't have to yeah. do anything like that's that. A, that's a big thing. Oh, my God. Too. You know, it's so funny. Like, these – these very unsexy things that go into these 20 minutes that, that you guys take to, to beat off. You know, 20 minutes might be a little bit of a uh, generous. Yeah. Guess, but <laughs> we give you 20 minutes worth. Um, but, like, no, it's so crazy, like, the amount of planning that, like, for that scene to mm-hmm. happen, you know, it took three days of work yeah. minimum, like, yeah. per day that, like, you're working on it and, and making it happen. And, like, can we just talk about how criminally undercompensated the back end of porn is? Like, yeah. when you compare it, like, I would say that you guys are doing three times the labor of a mainstream yeah. employee. Not sure. that there's anything wrong with mainstream, but it's simply the fact that you have to know everything. Like, in mainstream, there is... There's literally like, you know, oh, these are electrics C stands. Like mm-hmm. these are their stands. You can't touch them. Mm-hmm. You grip over here. Like mm-hmm. this is not your department. Yeah. Like you can't even touch this this stick that yes. I'm holding. Like this is not yours. Yes. Um in porn, everybody does everything. It's yes. collaborative. Like it's 100 percent um you are lighting, you are stills, you are audio, you are production management, you are craft services, you, you are, are PA. Everything. And Stylist. you're doing that for 30% of what one person who just has one departmental job yeah. is doing. Yeah. And, like, we were talking about this yesterday of – it's such a – I think it's such a, like, if there's one thing I think in porn that 
is applicable to the wider world of like gig economy work. It's that if you are consistently undervaluing your work, Mm -hmm. you're, you're setting that standard. And there's always somebody that's willing to do your job for less. Yep. But people like, I don't know the, the quality aspect of this. Like I care about what I make. I want it to look as cinematic as possible, as right. beautiful as possible. I want it to be as sexy as possible. And I spend a lot of time and effort doing that. And then I look at the end of the day at like how much money the crew and production are actually walking with. And I'm just like, why are we doing this to ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Like the skill set that we have, like we really all must be just, we just must fucking love this job at the end of the day. Like that has to be it. Like there's, there's nothing quite like this informal creative environment that we have, but the the struggles that the that the crew undergoes and the constant law changes mm-hmm. and the legal dimension to this, like you guys have no clue how much battle goes into just being able to supply a steady diet of like ethically made porn yeah to oh my god the wider world it's it's so difficult and it's like i like i would love to go into detail about it but i also no. don't want to call myself out on no. some stuff because it's just like but sometimes i do feel like i get punished because i want to do everything by the books and i want to do everything properly and i want to which costs more run a business the way you're supposed to run a business and it 100% costs so much more money when there are other people who just kind of skate around certain things and and you know i can understand how a lot of companies might go with oh this person's pitching us like $1000 less like, why do we care if this person is perhaps exposing himself to certain risks on, you know, whatever level? Because oh, yeah. they're signing a contract. All of those, like, they're public signing, Miami shoots and shit like they're that. They're signing a work for hire contract where they are admitting, they are taking on full responsibility and all liability for mm-hmm. anything that happens on set. So, like, we don't care. You know and, what I mean? It's no yeah. skin off our back. Yeah. So well, and and like good luck. Say okay, so like you're a company that assumes all of this liability. Like you're a production company that says, yeah. okay, sure, to whomever, I will sell you this scene that I'm making according to your specs, um, and I'm creating it this way. If anything happens, though, the the normal protections that a contractor would have liability insurance, workman's comp, mm-hmm. um, the the typical dice insurance is right, like trying to get them to work with adult because of the stigma that we have. Oh, and yeah. then like you throw in the the real legal dimensions to that, like the payment processing, like banks and and um at a at a federal level, banks and payment institutions have been disincentivized in in very real economic ways from working with adult because we're grouped in with the same group of people as like drug dealers and yeah. human traffickers and yeah. like all of these things. And so putting a choke on our financing is considered a way of running porn out of civilized society. But all it does is force us underground. All it does is in a really real way make our sets more dangerous for crew and for talent. Because I don't think – if that's one thing – I think like the last time that I was on your podcast, I really, really heavily stressed how important it is that talent be protected mm-hmm. um, from a work safety perspective, from a mental health perspective and all of that. But like crew have just as many of the same problems. They are just as open to – being taken advantage of, albeit in very different ways. Mm-hmm. Like the the types of advantage that's taken of is really from these more predatory company practices. Mm-hmm. Like, and do I necessarily think that these uh, corporations are sitting like these? Most of them are foreign entities that have never really stepped foot onto a porn set, and mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that they're like sitting up in their offices going like, "Oh, how can we, how can we fuck over these, yeah, yeah, yeah. these little men down here that are making our stuff." Um, I think it's really just that that like invisible hand of the market that right. just moves towards whoever can get it done the cheapest, the fastest, right. the whatever. And I mean, it's all about capitalism. Yeah. And if you can get the same product or a similar enough product 
for less money, why wouldn't you do that? How, you know, that's how you become a successful business in the first place, right? You don't just throw money at people because you like want them to be happy. Right. That's not like what makes a good business person, which is why I'm so shitty at it. Dude, same. <laughs> I'm constantly overpaying. Like I make honest in all honesty, I make like barely any money on my features because I always wind up like overpaying my crew because yeah. I'm just like I'm putting you through so much yeah to get this product I done. always go over food budget because I'm like it's been a really long day like of course we're gonna get you guys pizza and coffee like I'm yeah. you know what I mean like mm-hmm. that's only fair and and like kill fees if things happen like I'm always like yeah. the one doing the kill fees and stuff yeah. like that like I'm just too uh tender-hearted on all of that stuff but like I don't know it's just it's so crazy to me, too, because porn is changing so much in the last, like, since I got in mm-hmm. almost four years ago. It's become, like, my joke is that porn is no longer punk rock. <laughs> like, this is true. Everybody and their mama has a Snapchat or an OnlyFans yep. now. Like, literally everybody. Like, there's there's mainstream celebrities now that have their own, like, little premiums mm-hmm. of various sorts. That's fascinating to me. But then on top of it, you know, looking at it now with a little bit of a back end eye, all I see is how much subscription and DVD sales and all of the traditional metrics of like how traditional porn has made money mm-hmm. is all diving. Like you yeah. can look back on these websites, like you can go to any of like the big sites and they've got those view counters on them. And you can see that like even just three, four, five years ago, it'd be like, oh, you know, 22,000 views on this video. I'm like, okay, well, 22,000 views on a video with subscribers, like you're looking at, you know, what that represents for what your subscribership was if you had 22,000 mm-hmm. people looking at it. And then now it's like, 3,000, mm-hmm. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 yeah. views. And then you think about, well, like how many of those were the guys that bought like lifetime memberships for mm-hmm. those bargain deals? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like you're not even probably netting a, a recurring income off right. of a huge portion of these just like lifers that are right. watching. So where are those people going to consume their pornography? Because it's not that anybody stopped beating off. Yeah, that's for sure. Nobody stopped beating off in this time span. Yeah. It's they've switched to the Patreons. They've Mm -hmm. switched to the OnlyFans. They've switched to Snapchat. And I think my big curiosity is everything changes. Like nothing will stay the same. Mm -hmm. But like what does that mean? I think it means, um, I think that especially now in the place that we are at and how disassociated we are from each other because of the, you know, advent of the internet and the proliferation of social media is that people are seeking connection, like a personal connection. You do not feel connected to people when you join a big, you know, multi pass Mm -hmm. website and you see all these professionally shot scenes on your favorite girls. You do not feel connected to them when you join their Snapchat And they're like, you know, taking pictures of themselves in the bubble bath when they're in the car and they're like, hey, guys, on my way to set streaming like that. And they're responding to your DMs. That is a personal connection that you are not getting on those other sites. And I think that we are becoming an increasingly more and more lonely culture. Absolutely. And I think that that's. That's that's what it is. That's also why camming is such a big thing, too. I think that's a really astute observation because, like, the same things that you and I have just been complaining about for the last two days yeah. straight with regards to... <laughs> we literally have been. Yeah, we had a big... We had a, like... like I Holly, love getting together with other directors because all we do is complain. Holly like, It's is just a like, one big bitch fest. <laughs> I love hanging out with you, Holly, because, like, every time that I do, like... Not that you are in any way, like, old enough to be a mom, but, like, you've been doing this so long. Like, you, there, you have, like, a big maternal presence. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this is normal. I'm feeling normal yeah. things. <laughs> I know. I remember oh. when you hit me up and you were, like, struggling to find a location. And I was like, girl, I feel your pain. You're like, this happens to you, too. I'm like, you have no idea. <gasps> That it is so that meant so much to me that you took the time out of your day just to like do a little emotional labor for like a relative stranger. I was like, oh my god, thank of you, course. thanks just I... for being a, a shoulder to yeah, cry. I on. get it, I still um, get it. But no, like the same things that are happening in porn with regards to just like the the gig economy of of porn and how mm-hmm. there's no big contracts and we're all just sort of like scrapping to get the 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 job done for the cheapest is I think everybody's working 
all the time. Like all of my friends that oh my aren't God. in this business yeah. have, you know, not just one job, not just two jobs, but like they have a myriad of side hustles. And like late stage capitalism really just means that like if you have any amount of free time that you're not using to work, you feel guilty about it. Oh, and absolutely. That's universal. I mean, yeah. I feel bad whenever I'm not working, but Everybody. I've realized that that's not exclusive to like people that own their own businesses or that are in this side of the business. Like everybody that I know Mm -hmm. is constantly trying to do more and more with their time. But where does that leave us as far as like human connection or creativity or anything? Or even just being happy. Like what are we striving for? Yeah. What is our ultimate goal? Survival. Yeah. But it's like, I mean, look, we're all doing fine. Like you and I are like, yeah, we're not, we don't like live in mansions no. and we don't drive fucking Lamborghinis, but like we can feed ourselves. Right. We're comfortable. We can do things. So like, what are we actually going after? Oh, I'm having a whole existential crisis. Yeah, I feel the, the same. At the moment in my life, like my whole question at this point. So like everybody sort of knows me as like, <laughs> I feel like. I feel like I had a, like a, you know, like, like porn knows me from like these series of tweets that I put mm-hmm. out, at, like right before everybody started looking towards content, like yeah. as like really seriously taking content as yeah. like a thing. Yeah. Like, you were definitely touting them before anybody else. Oh, that's kind of you. But like, um, cause I got in as a way, like porn was just a method of promoting my content. Cause right. like I had like a life and a family and I was like a wife who wanted to like be home with my family and right. all of that stuff. So that was just kind of like my thing. But like, I've built it now. Like, it's now to the point where I can maintain what I have with very minimal effort. And that's, like, almost worse to me. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're working towards something, that feels amazing. Like, you're just constantly like, okay, I'm subsuming my whole life into this thing with this expectation that once I'll get to that point that I will have question mark? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, I know I have to get to that point. Right. (laughs) Like, I know there's something good there. And so, like, now that I'm at that point of, like, okay, I've hit numbers that, like, I – I'm really happy with and like I'm now to this point where like it's like this little machine that like kind Mm -hmm. of like runs by itself like all I have to do is just like chit chat and hang out with my fans a little bit Mm -hmm. and like make a little bit of content but like nothing on the scale of like some of the shit that like I've tried in the past um I'm like what's what is what do I do like I'm so corrupted by capitalism like I'm the daughter of two entrepreneurs and who were always working on their businesses and now I have my business to a place where I'm happy with and I'm just like well what the fuck is there now yeah like like what is our all of our lives are so wrapped up in our labor Mm -hmm. but like like I'm a historian by like that's what I went to college for and like I remember this crazy thing that they were talking about how in the medieval period of Europe that like English farmers probably worked less than 200 days out of the year because of the seasons and right. what they could and couldn't do. And that just blew my mind that like, I was like, well, okay. They didn't have internet. They didn't have TV. Most of them were illiterate. What the hell? No wonder they have 25 kids. Like, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> so like, true. What the hell are you doing with your time? You're just being with each other. Yeah. Being families and communities like doing nice things for like, one another. Talking to each other. That's so like our society has so shifted towards just constant labor and like try even now like say you hit this point where you have this time to go and pursue like fulfillment outside of your labor. Well, all of your friends have it. Yeah. Nobody in your community has. Everybody else is still hustling endlessly. Yeah. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? You're going to go get another hustle of some sort. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Know. I don't know. Existential angst from your your uh, daily wink. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, we could go on and on and on, but I feel like we've gone over. How long have we gone, Ernie? This has been... Hour 20. Hour 20. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. (laughs) We are are up there. But it's been great. I I... mean, and actually, you guys, you can hear Lena again because we are doing a live podcast at Expos 
and she's going to be um, on the on the podcast. So I'm excited. It's actually my first live podcast. It's a good like training ground because it's just like the expos seminar, so it's not like a big thing. And I'm so excited. In front of like people who like bought tickets just to see me, so I kind of feel like okay, this is like a good place for me to give this a try because actually one of my big goals. Because, you know, as we know, we're never happy um, for 2020 is to actually do like live podcasts in front of like a theater audience and like actually sell tickets and have shows and stuff like that. I'm so, so excited for you and like the directions you. that this podcast and your creative ventures are taking you. Thank you, darling. So, yeah. So Lena's I haven't uh, booked the other guest yet, but um, Lena will be on there and then we will record that. Um, and then we will put it up here on this platform. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that like regular fans can go to the expo seminars. I think you have to be yeah. in the industry. So it's not something that, um, you guys can just come see live, but that's okay. I'll still, it'll still be Who available. wants to leave their house anyway? Yeah, exactly. Just, just chill in your PJs. Yeah. With a, you're, you're with us in spirit. Yeah. I would be in my PJs too, if I could. Yeah. Same, same. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media if they don't already know? Uh, you can find me. So my Instagram is hard suspended, super suspended. Uh, Again? Girl, I don't, man, if anybody from Facebook is listening, just like whatever you want. It's all yours. Just call me. <laughs> just call me. It's yours. And I'll write your name Do you on. know... Like, like you're just pro- I would assume you're probably just putting up stuff that's not even remotely no, bad I'm and a they good just girl. keep banning you because it just hits the number of like reportages that they that they do it. I I miss I miss Instagram. I miss all of your funny jokes. But anyway, uh so Twitter and OnlyFans are like the big places to find me. So twitter.com slash Lena is a peach. And OnlyFans.com slash Lena is a peach. And you should be seeing more of me on Twitch TV coming here soon. So twitch.tv slash Lena Paul. Fantastic. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. I haven't been banned yet. So fingers crossed I won't be. Instagram, I love you. Please don't ban me. (laughs) (laughs) Don't tag me. Another podcast put my my hashtag on it. Just don't even say my name. Just say you're on set with with Lena. They got their whole podcast taken down. When I tried to make a new username, having any combination of Lena and Paul in the username got my IP off my phone. Hard banned. Wow. They really hate you. I don't know what I did. Holy shit. I think it's just like the rankings that I have on like, like, I don't know. Like, I think it's like, it's like how they were mad at Riley Reed for like a long time. Yeah. Like, wouldn't let any variation for her happen. Yeah. Just be careful. I'm not, I'm not going to put you on my Instagram. No, don't no, do I'm it. Scared. Don't do it. That's what I'm saying. Oh my God. That's crazy. Okay. Well, anyways, sad. That makes me very sad. <laughs> it's okay. It's, well, <laughs> These are the these are the first world problems that we enjoy. I know, right? Yeah. I guess in the large the biggest scheme of things, things could be worse. Um that's that's it. Uh Merry Christmas. Again. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And just don't forget, guys, if you are going to the AVN show in 2020, I will be there Thursday and Friday, uh doing my podcast from the adult time booth. So swing by, say hello. And um that's about it. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you guys next week. Bye.